What's up, Anti Network? This is Marco Harrington, author of Soul Ties. Make sure you pick up the book from Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Awesome. 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 Gods of all guys, we come to collide once again. But hey, y'all wonder why we said episode number two, brother Marco? You want to know why he said? <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell them why we do episode number two? Well, uh, man, we on episode number two, episode number two, number two. We on episode number two. Number one went went well. It went well. I'm gonna say it went well. It went well amongst us. Amongst us. Amongst us. Yeah. Audio. Audio didn't go well, but amongst us, it went right. right. Yes. Like that. We had some flaws going around, but right. I don't know. We still on episode number two. We just gonna roll yes. like it, like nothing ever happened. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and, we, and you know, and what's crazy is, you know, um, we had uh, covered a few topics. You know, what I mean, we covered what's going on overseas, Israel, Gaza. We also talked about um, what's going on a lot with the, uh, the alphabet community. Um, Brother Marco, you mind giving me the uh, the correct analogy? Uh, no disrespect, on, but you know, I don't like saying the wrong initial, so I say alphabet, so I think that's respectful. It's LGBTQIA2S plus is what it is. See, my brother, right. brother Marco knew all that because you know I ain't lesbian, gonna lie. gay, bisexual, transgender, trans, queer, questionable, intersexual, asexual, agender, and two spiritual. Meaning the plus sign means in addition to is what it means. Uh, I'm more curious, like um, in addition to what? It means that it could be like as. As we continue to like grow, or as they continue to grow, you can it always can be added to because you never know like what else growing on as the the years go. You can always add to the the acronym. Hmm. I, I was hearing some talks about they're trying to get pedophilia into this whole thing. Also, am I or was I just hearing some stuff? I, I, I was I was hearing some that like reading some stuff like on Google. As in they're trying to, you know, to show that that's not a a problem, you know, that it is it's okay for a man to, you know, you you um, mean to be like a pedophile? Yeah, like a man to have. Yeah, you kind of just yeah, man, come with out with that, bro. You beating around the bush, yeah. man. He, pretty yeah, much, for real. Man. yeah, because that's that's <laughs> no, that's, that's, no, that's, that's wrong. Pe- that's, that's that's why I say pedophilia, because um, pedophilia, like they they're trying to, well, not they. I've been reading that um that like just minor cases where they're saying that they they want to show that pedophilia is 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 not a bad thing and they're trying to justify why it's not a bad thing. And I was you know when I heard that that's what made me was like you know what we're going a little bit too far now. So that's a that's a mental health thing. I I understand the I understand the concept of it as right. mental health, but that's not an LGBTQ thing. Because Got it. If, so they, I'm, and I'm gonna just put it out there because if you touch my daughter and she's under right. age, I'm right. coming for you. Right. Point blank. Right. <laughs> and we just gonna put it out there. <laughs> right. 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 As right, we right. as we should, brother. As we should. As we yes. Should. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot's going on this week, man. Uh, as we all know. Uh, we got mass shooting, man. Uh, in the real world, celebrity world, man. We got. Rappers disrespecting their moms. I don't. I don't know if it's disrespect. That's why I have to. We have to bring it to the show, man. Um, we even got Dave Chappelle giving his opinion um, on what he feel about the war. So it's a lot of things we talking about today. So just to kind of recap a lot of things in quick summary, um, we know the war going on, um, and we well not the war. Well, we see the war in Gaza with Israel and all that good stuff. You know? Um, it is, it's technically a war. It's a battle between two two energies. So it, it's it's technically a war. It's, it's it's a war between two people. So I think I re- kind of recant because I'm thinking about if we was in it for example, you know, that maybe it's the military. Me, so I kind of just kind of slip with that. But um, again, man, a lot of casualties. Uh, Brother Marco, being that you were a vet, 
And of course, I like to talk to my man who works in the private sector because there's some some things we going on. I mean, he could speak about some some small classified teams that's good for YouTube. But brother Marco, man, just a quick uh, touch on man uh, from a veteran's perspective, man. What do you feel about what's going on in the Middle East once again? Oh, uh, yeah, you said just to touch on it, man. I think it's, I mean, I think it's a bad thing. Uh, and I. I mean, we talked about it last week, and I know we didn't get it all through. And you know, like I said, we had, you know, um, audio issues, but it's been going on for a long time. And everybody going to look back and say, oh, well, you know, it's only been going on since 1948. But, you know, as I said, you know, last week, it's been going on since like the, the 14, 1500s. It's been going on since, you know, Europeans had it. Um, it's just a power struggle to me. Um, people fighting over the base is basically power and they fighting over this one land um just to get basically uh just control control and we honestly need to in my opinion just just get peace <clears throat> and, uh, over it all united states which also is in getting involved in it and always been involved we all just need to just say stop and just just get a hold of it and just say, hey, can we all just get along at one point in time and just say, hey, why are we really why are we really fighting? What what's really the main reason of this whole strip that we're fighting over? Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't even understand the whole the whole gist of it and why um any of this really going on. It's just been going on for too long. Everybody's invading anybody. Um United States. You know, and even the whole Arabic Israel war, whatever the case may be, we just all need to just look at it from everybody's perspective and say we're losing too many people and we all just need peace among each other and just, you know, just give it, give it up. Just really just make peace about it. So I, I got that, that, that's great. I want to piggyback and mostly ask you guys some questions because you guys both were in the service, right? Mm. Um, Marines, correct? Both of you guys are Marines. No, right? no, no. That's that's, 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 that's oh, Army yeah. pride over there. That's cool. That's cool. Nah, we suited yeah. the okay, sounds. Yeah, yeah. He said, Army, no, baby. No, okay. Army. So, Army, Army um, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a Marine, right? right? So, you know, based off of um, your guys' experience, because you guys got deployed, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, okay. So, well, contractor, but it's, I was in our ranks. Okay. So, my question is this Do you guys feel, based off what is going on, this whole war was well planned out because from what I'm seeing as a civilian, they're dropping bombs, they're dropping bombs, they're dropping bombs, no problem. They're saying Hamas is over here, Hamas over here, that's why they're dropping the bombs. But if they're also saying that Hamas has a tunnel network, don't they need the ground troops to actually go in to get to those tunnel networks? Because the more bombs you drop is, is causing more casualties among civilians that have nothing to do with anything. So, isn't that, I guess, for you guys, when it comes to fighting war, isn't that like a, a common sense something? Like, okay, cool, they're underground. We can't get them from this up here. Probably gonna kill too many people. Somehow we gotta get in. Like, like what? How is that even? I mean, go about. Uh, brother, are they even in the rules? Are they even in the rules? So. So Marines always go in first. I was gonna let you go in first. Ah, okay, okay. We do it like that. We do it like that. Okay, so from my perspective, man, uh, war varies based on the country and, and who's leading the show. You know, um, in this manner, or in almost in any manner of how I look at war, it comes with casualties. No matter what plan of operation you go by, I haven't seen too many situations where war was kind of full blown and there was a low percentage of casualties, like. Man, they're they're hitting uh, guys up so bad. I think they knocked the internet out, or it's gonna be like an internet outage over there or something like that. So if they going that crazy, if the internet going out, that just shows you, man. Um, um, the rules, what we call rules of engagement, it seems like it's out of the window outside looking in. So um, I honestly, I honestly couldn't tell you no better uh, situation outside of that. Um, maybe. If I had the credentials, like a general who was kind of dictating war, who was with the big table, but just from my perspective, I think this is automatically what comes with it. I don't see no other way around this. Like when you got to push buttons or give orders and and bullets flying, hey man, 
This is what happens. When you send bums out, you can't guarantee as nobody is in the area. Just like even if that was propaganda where they said they blew up a hospital, it could really happen. And if it, it happens, what what do you say, really? Because at the end of the day, this is a part of war. War is sticky. War is messy. So um, do I like the whole circumstantial? I mean, excuse me, do I like the, all the circumstances behind it from all I know? Of course not. It's a lot of people dying. It's a lot of innocent people just getting killed. It's like no different when you're watching, was it Ukraine and Russia? Well, it's, it's, and that's still going on, I believe. So with that being said, it's like, again, nobody wants war, but this is what comes with it. And, and just to answer you, Edward, we don't got to say too much. We know war is profitable. So we ain't the big dog. So we don't, we don't, we ain't, we ain't reaping the benefits. And I ain't saying it's probably good benefits to have, but we all know at the end of the day, outside looking in, it's more profitable. But DeMarco? Right. Yeah. Just to touch bases. Yeah. Um, it always comes from above first. We always attack from up top first. You go okay. up top, you climb the top of the hill, you go down to the bottom. And casualties are always part of war. And you don't really look at it that way at first. And then, like you said, rules of engagements, you go, then once you once you hit that, you go down to the bottom and you say, hey, okay, well, you know, maybe we did kill too many people at first, you know, at first. And then you start mm. thinking about it and then you start thinking about, okay, maybe you should not shoot this person. Maybe you should not. And that's the way we did it when we did Iraq, when we first uh, hit Iraq. And he was like, okay, well, we hit this many people. We killed this many people. How these many people died? You know, we killed civilians or whatever like that. And then you start having those rules of engagement. And you say, hey, you got to call in to you know, jock and say, hey, well, I got this person over here. Can I shoot? Can I do this or whatever like that? And they call it back up and they say, hey, you can't do it unless they engage you first. Then we go through that type of, you know, channels or whatever. That may happen. But if somebody's underground, you got to get that call first before you go underneath. But we don't even know what's going on. We don't know what's happening right now. And to say, like right now, as I say, United States might not, not there. We're not there. We're not there. You know, so we don't even know what's there right now who's going underneath the ground and what's what's happening so to from the outside looking in we can't really say what is and what's not you know got so it we can't really say okay and i guess my second question would be because you guys were in this entire machine i call it a machine because it is a machine you know uh what they call it boots on the floor like if boots you're boot number one, boots on the ground. If you're boot number one, we got boot number 100. And all the boots got to come through in order to get the mission accomplished. So I guess my question to both of you guys, when it comes to mentally, as you just said, you know, they go back over, well, we kill a thousand people. We can try not to do that next time. They're not killing a thousand people. They're giving the order to kill a thousand people. So most likely it's you guys that are giving the order to this how much have to go. How does that affect you mentally when everything is said and done? You you leave the service and you look back at that four, eight, how much of a period of time or how much time that you got deployed? How how does it affect you mentally on a mental level? You know what I mean? Because we know that PTSD is a big thing amongst um, veterans. But how does that affect you live, coming back to regular life, you know? So I'll take this one first. Yes, so, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so dealing with dealing with it, man. Once when you there. So I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna go back from basic training for they break you down right to not think about that shit. And I'm mm. I know we in the anti network and we can talk about this like they break you down not to think about that shit first while you in there. Once you get once you get there, it's not even a question. You know whatever. You might question what you're about to do and how you're going to do it. You might be afraid at once. Once you get in there and you do some of the shit you have to do, then you build up your your your, your courage to do whatever you have to do. But once it happens, you're probably not afraid. You think about it, you go to sleep, you deal with it, and it's like a light switch. You know, it's on. Mm. But once you get back home, it's hard to turn that light switch off. You think about it. You've been down sometimes. You're like, oh, shit, where's my weapon? You know, where's my weapon? You think about it. It's not even there. And it's hard to turn that light switch off. After a while, for doing it so many times and so many years or whatever like that, that light switch, turning it off and turning it on, ain't there. 
So mentally, you playing it back in your head over and over and over and over again. You're no longer, as you would call it, a civilian. You're a soldier that's been built up to only know what a soldier is capable of doing. So once you turn back into a civilian, a civilian life is not what you are. You're, te you're technically a soldier. So all the shit that you did plays in your head over and over. The suicide, suicide bombers, the, you know, IEDs and stuff like that that you've seen over and over in your lifetime. The, the Even the drill sergeants that drilled you over and over, your command that told you you weren't going to be shit or you are shit or, or whatever the case may be. The MSTs, which we don't talk about, the things that you go through plays back in your head once you sleep or while you're at home and some of the things are like washing dishes, the commands and stuff you do plays over in your head becomes PTSD. And they don't, mm. they don't talk about, they don't talk about that, you know, and how, you, how it plays into you once you get home. So that becomes your, your trauma. That becomes who you are. And that plays a bigger role to who you are nowadays. And you, as a civilian, you're not capable of doing that and dealing with that as a person. So it, it takes time to, build yourself back up as a civilian, as a person, woman, man or female, man or female. And I'm going to take this to heart because a lot of females deal with this a lot more than men do because they deal with a lot more harassment and shit in the military than men do. And I'm not going to say men don't do it because we deal with MST too in the military just as much as females do. So it, it's, it's hard. And PTSD do, do play a big factor and when we get back home. Mm. So it's all bro. Um I I I could agree with a lot of what uh brother Cole Mark said, but I think in a lot of these situations it's really all about your mindset. Um for me, it's the, a lot of it is it's the same, just whether it's the army or the Marine Corps. But I think I suffer a lot of this before I even got to the military. I think the military just kind of just adds a little flavor to it. Um, so being in Iraq, seeing bombs, getting, I mean, not seeing bombs, but, you know, getting bombed on, uh, enemies trying to crawl over the wall and shoot, you seeing them point AKs at your Chanel. Now a word from our sponsors. Um, I honestly just see it as like, Another day. Uh, I, I'm not saying that as like I'm like a stone cold killer or nothing, but I think when you come from a rural environment, it really do prep you more than people understand. Like, for example, if anybody who comes from any urban environment, the hood, get whatever you want to call it, the patio, and when you see conflict so much, it kind of makes you numb a little bit. So that's why you might see some crazy times where you see dudes in the street might get into it. A dude might have a gun to him. Guy so numb for being so much, he don't run. He don't care. He probably ready to die. And I think that's kind of uh, some of the situation to deal with the military. Like, I just kind of look at it as another trial of ups and downs. Um, I did get diagnosed with PTSD, GAD, general anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder. And But reality, I feel like the military is no different from my old neighborhood. So I don't really have the... the like, you know, not to drag this out, I don't really have the, the, I guess, the wear down like a lot of people. I think it just depends on who a person is and what they personally went through when they went overseas. With me, I've seen a lot. I wouldn't want to drag it out and say all the crazy stuff I didn't seen, but I sleep pretty good at night. <laughs> but, so <laughs> when I get my eight hours, I sleep pretty good at night, man. I don't really be snapping brooms or nothing like that, man. I, I, if anything, it's probably more of adrenaline arrest, but don't judge me, man. I'm not crazy. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just how life is, I guess. So yeah. That's just that's just how I look at it, brother. But since it, you're taking it took a leave, me a minute, though. I'm sorry. It took me a minute, though. It did take me a minute after I retired. It took me a minute. I can understand, but I think more because you know, the, one, the army got longer deployments in the Marine Corps, and one, you yeah. know, I didn't go as a Marine. But um, for me, as a contractor, I was there for about a year, and it's really no different. It's honestly kind of worse. Because you over there, you don't, if you're not like Blackwater or like some private security company, you don't got no gun. You get a Kevlar in the vest, but in, in, when you over deployed, you know, you might got your M16, your M4, or your, your issue 9 mil, you rate the uh, uh, qualification to have one, but you a civilian and contract in the same position as a soldier. I think it's a little more 
fighting it the most. There's a lot of contractors who yeah. left. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's definitely for sure. But if since my brother Kaza, you taking the lead, man, uh, you you um you got anything that can lead for us in the, the probably the craziest thing that's going on right now at Lewis the Main, mass shooting, what is it about eighteen dead? Something like that? Yes. I was actually about to to I'm sorry, host, but you know what I mean? I, I'm liking this because it, it just blends so well because you guys are prior. So my thing, I would no, for sure, for sure, right for sure. into that, you know. So I guess, um, um, Brother Marco, I guess this question would be directed to you because um, you, you said it clearly. It took you a while to get over what you got over being part of the Army. Now, this guy in Maine, uh, he was part of the Armed Reserves. So if I'm not mistaken, I guess so everyone can know. In order to be part of the Army Reserve, do you have to, and he's soon retired, do you have to be active at some point or you can just sign up to be reserved and then retire? How does that even work? So he's Army Reserve. He has to, he has a commitment basically, but he's, he's doing basically a call up. He's doing like, um, he's doing like time. He's doing like, how can I say it? He's doing like weekends a month or he's doing okay. the weekend uh, warrior. Weekend warrior. He's doing like weeks a month, weekend, one once a month, and two weeks out of a year for on reserve, basically. Okay. And then um Brother Freddie, I got a question for you. Um do you hey, feel hey, hey, hey man who who is Freddie? I don't know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> brother, no, brother, go ahead, go ahead. Brother, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, brother X, brother X. So, uh, no, I it's see, I see someone pass behind you, so I was telling that person behind you. It's so, all right. Uh, um, so, brother X, my question to you is this, right? Um, and this is going to lead right back into the, the 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 mass shooting. Do you feel anyone that has a, a mental mental issues like psych psychiatric issues or if they were uh admitted into a psych ward do you feel that they should be allowed to own any kind of long gun whether it be shotgun rifle any kind of long gun now i'm not i don't want to say that we are you know we have the right to bear arms but then my question now for you both you guys what kind of arms are we bearing to defend self if it is that you have a psychiatric issue. Oh man, um, I, I, I apologize if that was too pat, but that's nah, just how I think this is a tricky question, and and I'm I say this, you know, because I like to look at life for a while. When we look at any type of mental, what you say, deformity, in any shape or form, it's very hard to say that your Second Amendment right should be taken because of the situation, because. I believe majority of this planet has some type of mental disparity, like in some form of fashion. Like, remember, everybody just ain't going to the doctor and getting diagnosed. That's the only right. thing. Remember, like, three fourths of everybody in Chicago, if you're born on the South Side, especially, probably got PTSD because you're going through like a real life war zone. You know what I mean? So I think that, and I, I think it's just more cost of, uh, more, I say, what was it more costly on our government? I think it just needs to be more uh, of a strenuous process for people who kind of fit already fit the role of not being too well. Because to right. sit here and say, "Oh, well, you tripping today, you might trip next week, but what about next month, next year?" You know, sometimes people do recover for the better. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people don't. But I think if anybody who plays something, how would I say? more tragic to where it's eyeless you can see like this guy's not rat white he did some of the craziest or heinous crime it's so hard not to you can't ignore it then right. i think it should be a heavy evaluation or like even to a board at one point to say hey did he bear the right to have firearm because remember right. it's a lot of veterans and i i don't want to slam us but it's a lot of veterans who get out shouldn't even own the gun i'm just being mm -hmm. honest it's a lot of veterans veterans who are out in the world as soldiers in the mindset, but civilian in, in status, but they shouldn't have firearms. Because again, because everybody don't go to get checked, to get 
to get diagnosed for you have this A, B, or C, doesn't mean you're okay. So I think that's is always going to be like a double edged sword in my opinion. But I will say that for people who exhibit behavior to where it probably got them a felony or something that you have to go to court for, where it's kind of a little bit too bizarre, like this don't seem normal. I think if you want to bear firearms, it should be like a, an additional test to see, like, are you really qualified? Like, you know what I mean? So right, I just right. think that would cost more of our government and our dollars, you know what I mean, to to put that in place. And we know it's a lot of things the government can put money into place when it comes to <laughs> America. Right. And we don't want to go there today, you know, so I'm just, I'm just right. keep it tight like that. <laughs> yeah. But and also, I just want to say quick, man, if y'all see me kind of looking off or bearing off, got to mind you, the, the equipment always acting weird at the wrong time. So I apologize even to my brothers, even to people who watch this. So you, I want you to think when my brother's talking, I'm not engaged. But, you know, I'm running the operation over here. I got the computer, the, you know, the setup, the the, 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 S, the OBS joint. So I'm just trying to get things ready. Y'all see them back. I'm trying to make it a little more presentable. A little more presentable. Got it. <laughs> so in a situation, Maine, Lewiston, 18 dead. What is our overall take on this? When it comes to, since we're on this subject, when it comes to America's part in this, do you think that we're going to treat this like, hey, respectfully, it's another white guy, he's just tripping a little bit, he gets swept under the rug, it's the empty network, I'm just saying, or, or you know what I'm saying, are we going to really go our, our way to implement more structure or security to people who have mental illness so we prevent it? Because I'm just going to be real. I'm not a racist. I, I I mean, if anybody, you know, I give everybody equal hell. If anybody would know me personally, I talk to a black person like I talk to a white person, no matter me. But I'm just being honest. If he was black, you know, I don't think we, this would be the same energy. Even if he was Mexican, like, you know, you know, you live in a country where white kind of right. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to go too deep in that. But it's the ethnic network. <laughs> but we are brothers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How y'all feel about this on either both sides of the opinion? So... <clears throat> so my my thing is, and, and Robert Clark, man, I know he's a veteran, or whatever, and we going they gonna play on his his mental health regardless. And you know, they say he was a marksman. I know a lot of his fellow soldiers try to say, oh, he was a good guy. We didn't see it coming. You know, they talked to him, and you know, a lot of his, I guess, his aunties, cousins, aunties, or whatever, played that same part. But a couple of weeks prior to it. He walked in and said he wanted to shoot up a whole armory. Mm -hmm. Walked in and said he wanted to kill a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people. He was having a mental break then. You know, in the right mind, if I would have walked in, me, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to just say it just like you. If I would have <laughs> walked in, I'm, 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 I'm just being honest. No, I'm it's being a fact. Honest. Let's do it. Let's do it. And anybody who can say my wife is half my, my wife is half white, you know, my mother in law is white, you know, white, so I can say it, you know, whatever whatever the case may be. If I was ordered to walk in into an armory, regardless, and said, I'm gonna shoot this motherfucker up, I would be locked down and evaluated. They come in, regardless if my wife is here, they come in. They hit all my safe. They take my shotguns, my ARs, my pistols, all my rounds, all my shoe strings, and lock my fucking ass up. And it's the point blank. That's that's it's the fucking truth. And I'll be evaluated. I'll be on every fucking medication that I'm not already on. You know what I'm saying? And I got a degree in psychology, so it don't even it don't even matter of what I was saying and what I was doing. They'd be like, well, you know, Marco. Comar, whatever you want to call me, Dr. Harrington, whatever the case may be, they'd be like, he having a mental breakdown, take all his shit or whatever. But this guy, they'd be like, oh, he's 20 year plus veteran, whatever the case may be. They'd be like, oh, well, you know, he just, oh, bless his heart, he's just having a, a moment. That's, that's, that's how they're treating him right now. And they're going to play right. to his mental part. He's not me, I'm going to get shot down on the street if I was running. They're going to pick him up. <sighs> They're gonna they're gonna buy him McDonald's. They're gonna they're gonna drive him to not the Big Mac, not the Big Mac with extra fries. <laughs> yes, they are. Not the Big Mac and with extra fries. Even though he's on the run, the dude had a plan because he parked his car next to. Like I said, he's good in that in the in the woods, which I'm good in the woods. We all had land now. I'm recon, whatever the case may be. 
he parked his car on the river, probably got a boat. He driving, he he floating down south, coming down here. If I catch him, he gone. Whatever. Oh <laughs> Lord, don't go to Texas. He might not make it to court. <laughs> but but you know what I'm saying? They gonna that's how that's how they gonna play it, man. They gonna say he had a mental breakdown. That's how they all gonna play. It. That's how we always gonna play. It. But the government ain't doing enough. We not we we're not doing enough to for, for gun safety or whatever. Ever ever man, we have more killings and more mass shootings here in the United States than any part of the world. Any part of the world. Yes. Not only that, there's we we're half we have half the deaths here in the United States than we have had and the wars combined half of it bro we american soldiers overseas is half or is only half the deaths right now that we have in america that's saying a lot bro and we have body on our own that doesn't make sense to me at all like how the fuck do we go overseas and it's seven thousand of us die, die overseas but three thousand of us here in america right now are dead because of mass shootings how does that make sense to me? To add on that, um, which uh, is two things I want to uh, ask. Uh, for one, I, I know we both kind of touched on the, if we were black situation. And it's 2023, which I think is kind of funny when we say this. Like, do you think this is something that's going to like carry on to the world blow up? Or do you think, like, at a, as the prediction as one source may claim, I think it was CNN who stated that uh, by, was it 2050, that a lot of us supposed to be more like interracial, so a lot of the world going to be kind of like brown, like anyway. Do you think it's still going to be like this, even if that was Yeah. Be- <clears throat> so, research, when we did my, we did research when I, when I was in school, that around that time, that yes. it'll be more likely than it will be. Yes, it will be. I guarantee it will be. Yeah, be I, will, I was actually reading documents of that yes, too. Yeah. It will. It will be. Because I think that's crazy when you think about it as like, even as veterans or, you know, as good abiding citizens we are, you know, in, in the common <laughs> of the world. I think it's really funny when we talk about this and we realize that it's for sure, unless we was like millionaire, billionaire connected or something, that if we was in this same guy situation, Mr. Mr. Card, Robert Card, Robert we Card. would be screwed. So that makes me think like, you know, when we have these conversations, is it pointless to have or is is it anything we could think as the people, of course not just brown people, but just people in general, to make a change where this seems more uh, uh, a benefit for our children's future? Because I think it's odd it, as you know, in our lifetime, at this point, especially how futuristic technology and so advanced we're supposed to be as Americans, but given the statistics you just gave versus overseas and home, and to say that we, as the innovators of a lot or most of many, have this issue is, is pretty asinine to me. So I was, uh, that's why I asked you, brothers, do you see this being a, a, a current thing when it comes to our skin complexion holding us accountable? Over something we never even had control of, which is history. Um, you you said one thing prior, which was you asked the question: Is it pointless to have these conversations? What we're doing here in the Anti Network right now, understand, is not for us. It's really not for our generation. It's for people after, like your kids and your grandkids, because those are the people that's going to change it. We right now we're only making a stand. Because understand one thing, right? And I say this very, very freely on this anti-network, that at any point, let's just say when we hit two million, three and million views, and we're all over there, our face are plastered all over the internet. It only takes one person that is making this money move around to say, you know what? Them boys up to something. We can't. We can't really have that. We can't really have that. Now I'm not saying some person is going to do that here in America, but when we look at how things go. When anyone is doing something um, impactful for society, for some reason they always they always leave us. When you think about this, can I, can I interject something real quick? Um, okay. When we say that, and, and again, I will try to keep the ball on, but this is an interesting topic. Um, when we look at these 
these situations that we kind of all know without saying it, <laughs> like that happen to certain people when they do certain things. <clears throat> do you think if we was to push a movement or to bring more awareness to strong equality, not no Black Lives Matter, I, I don't even want to be associated, but I'm just right. talking about in general right. when it comes to any like full equality <clears throat> when it comes to the people of stronger melanin <clears throat> because yeah, um, everything that we talk about on this network, we do try to bring awareness, we do try to bring perspective. You know, we try to bring a different element to this game so people can look, think, and and react for sure, and hopefully right. for the better. But yes. when we sit here and have these conversations, and some of these times it be light, as you know, we still ain't touch on a few, but a lot of things as we talk about is critical. Um, when I hear you brother speak, it really makes me think like man, like. If we're doing this more for the better of human civilization, not and really this what we're talking about, really it can't knock nothing in my opinion. Maybe you guys can elaborate um, to where it can knock the money. So, for example, right now I could be fully wrong, but that's why I'm gonna just make a short analogy. Then I leave it to you guys. Martin Luther King got killed not from protesting, but going against war. Remember. War is big bucks. Now, I remember before, I tell them all the time, yeah, J. Ray Hoover, he might not have liked MLK and all the rest of them, them good old boys back then. They was getting their ass with. That was about it. They wasn't dying. Almost any time anybody has did something that can reflect government change, it seemed like they kind of didn't, didn't make it. So do you think the situation is asking for real equality? We ain't asking for no money. We ain't trying to push no agenda. We're not running for president. This ain't no Democrat or Republican. This is really a melanated issue. Do you see that we can be at the same problem where we're going to go to Memphis and leave the hotel room and our shit get decapitated by 308? That's all I want to know. So I, I just want to say this real quick as a, as a private, basically, a private, you know, private services. Be frank with you, I thought before even, you know, coming onto the Act Network, all this ran through my mind. Yo, listen, if you go out there, you do this, your face is plastered out there. I'm at off. any point, <laughs> at any point, at any point, if it is that you start to bring change or you start to have people think more of, okay, cool, for as you said, wherever the dollars are going. So let's just say a trillion dollars is going over here and we are bringing uh, the trillion dollars over there. And then we call the trillion dollars to come back over here. Guess what? I am a threat now. I'm a threat, you know? So my thing is if I, if I go outside and all of a sudden, you know, there's a note that's left on my table. I don't want to live in anymore. It's just not me. It's really not me. So I want brother Marco to eject, but I'm not trying to cut you off because I'm trying to be mindful of the time. I'm, good, good, remember good. One, one key thing here. What are we doing that requires funding or money? Because remember, yeah. if you talk about true equality without no brain, funding, this right here, the this brain, is what doing. No. Fun, no, the mindset, funding that money, that's where it all starts. Okay, go ahead, so, brother Mark. I, I want, I definitely want to hear what my brother got to say. So, brother Kazi, I, I want, I want y'all to think of something right now, and this is what, right now, we are parasites, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody got to think about it, right? What is the one true thing that everybody say? that everybody has the one thing that nobody can take away from me right now. Think about it. I'm going to go Okay. okay. Free, Free will. will. Right. We're giving everybody the, the same thought that you can think about anything, your opinion, right? Everybody has free will. Right now, right. that's what we're giving everybody, our opinion, free will. But if we give the government our free will and they be like, them boys is on to something. Right now, we're in interjecting everybody's free will to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And if we give everybody that thought to think for themselves, and they're like, we got to take that shit away from you. That's where, same thing Martin Luther King did. That's where they, that's where they feel like we're at the free will. Mm. So, so are they afraid? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Are, are they afraid of, and I'm not going to get black and white into it, are they afraid of us the people on a whole or are they afraid that is us 
because of our skin color, given the free will instead of them giving it with, with limitations. They're what afraid, yeah. That, giving it to a limitation. Because you got to think about it, like they say, black people are afraid to read, right? You put anything in, you can give us anything, but if you give it to us in a book, give it to us in a book, right? <laughs> so right, 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 right. right? right? We're, afraid, we're afraid to open a book, right? The only thing that we, we're not afraid to open up is a Bible, which everybody say the Bible is just something that the white man gave us, right? To, for us to open. Right, that's the only thing that we're not afraid to open. But everything else, we're afraid to open. But if we open our minds and think for ourselves, and we interject that to everybody else, then they become afraid of us because now we're thinking for ourselves. Anything else? That's why they're trying to take away, um, you know, uh, the black, you know, Black History Month, Black History right. Month, and stuff like that. Anything away from us that we can think. For ourselves and say, okay, this is the shit that we need to be teaching them. They're trying to take that shit away from schools and anything like that. They're trying to take it out of colleges and stuff like that. Everything that we can say, oh, this is where y'all fucked up. Now let me step on y'all fucking back and climb the fucking mountain and climb the hill and reach for what y'all fucking owe me so I can take it back, take back of what needs to be mine. They don't right. want that shit to happen. That's the that's the problem that they don't want us to be. And that's where uh, they come knock on our door. Like, oh, you know, Mr. Harrington, hey, come with me because you got such and such. You know, that's the shit. Like, yeah. Come knock, on, come knock on my door. Freedom will ring. <laughs> you, you know, I'm not. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was funny. <laughs> hey, but, hey, the play that was advocate, man. And I know this might be like a one in a billion type of shot, man. I think it's possible, man, to to raise the vibration, to to make a change, at least for America. Now, can I speak for the world? No. I say that strongly for America because America, in my opinion, we are the direction of the future when it comes to country. And being that we have the hugest reputation for country, in my opinion, I think we can raise it by an astonishing amount to make change to show that color should be more imagination based. Because mm -hmm. at this point where we live in that in our lives in 2023 it's very crazy to think that we are still allowing a narrative to where if a black guy has an AR-15 yeah. if he walks into Walmart that's permitted the police might get caught. But a white dude, but all about numbers and percentages now. Some white people might get called police. All day. If a white guy or a woman walks in with an AR-15 totally and they're cool. okay, I think this is really the time this needs to change. Now, of course, stereotypes, being prejudiced, just mm -hmm. being full-blown hateful, that's going to be to the end of time. But I think the, the narrative to where we see the news and this is the color they see, whether it's lighter or darker, and he's automatically guilty, and he has to prove himself innocent. I thought it was innocent until proven guilty. Guilty. So that's why I say, you know, I'm I'm just gonna play devil's advocate on this, fellas. I think that this is something that needs to be more addressed. It's not on the internet network, but the world, because it's, it always kills me looking at the news, and when I see. Anything white or somewhere close or anything rich, rich and white, we rich and white damn near for the most part. It's some type of benefit that comes with that that I don't see at nowhere close as high percentage. Anything, I want to say over ten percent. I'm, I think I'm being generous. Anything of melanated skin could be in the same situation. I don't see it being played so light. I feel like they got this dude driver's license. This dude could have probably been cutting the deer head off. They ain't put that. But I think if I feel like a dude who was melanated who had his life changed around, they might find him throwing up his old hood, you know what I'm saying, and put that on the news. So I think this this narrative is we gotta we gotta put more energy in this to you know to get it to get yeah. it. And get and it. before we move on, because I know we gotta move on, I just wanna say this on the anti network, I am not a suicidal person. I love life to death. <laughs> I just want to say I don't take any. Get him help! <laughs> I don't take any kind of drugs. I don't drink. 
my my car is not a computerized car either, so the brake test cannot fail. <laughs> just, just 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 putting that out there to you guys. All right. Hey, hey, somebody mm. gotta download this video because <laughs> if my man, if my man, look, I was gonna say something, but I know we ain't gonna make it if I say what I was gonna say. That even the internet work for make it. But if my yeah, man get on the train one day yeah. and that shit just happened to do like a thousand flips. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, so no, I'm going to sure. come get you. You hey. got my number. I'm going to come get you, bro. Yeah, hey, and please, speaking please. of my other brother, who's about letting freedom ring ring? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. If the doctor not in the house, I love all my people. <laughs> yes, yes, everybody. We love everybody. Hey, you know, we, we, hey, we, my, we just... hey, my best friend, wife. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Hey, we, I know I know a lot speaking. of white teams. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I know a lot of white teams, man. Look, so, hey, we done burnt up so much on time, to the next, man. Bro. On to the next, bro. Yeah, we done and burnt we up got... so much time, man, talking about all this, this 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 craziness that's going on in the world, man. I really want to cover a few more topics, but I think I just want to kind of summarize just, just to make it simple, because I know we all on schedule. Um, I, as I talked to you and the, uh, the brothers in the group, man, I really want to cover the blue face uh, situation. And the reason why I want to cover that more for the NT News Network is really not about the fact that he's a rapper. I think it was more of the dynamic of what I've seen, a son and his mother. Now, as I was telling the brother Marco, uh, I understand uh, brother Kaji was busy, but we had a conversation short about this via text. What is life like today? When you go on social media, regardless of what's going on, and you will blast your own parents. Now, we all, I think we all come from that background where our mama, you know, they might say some things in front of company. They might say some things a little bit too harsh. They might just think some things like, damn, I can't believe you, my mama, you said that. But are we at a point now in our lives where we're challenging parents to where if our parents embarrassed us, we're going to go equally as hard to embarrass them. Because what I'm talking about for people who don't know for sure, but pretty sure everybody who's married. Blueface got married to, I believe, his his baby mama. Ch- child's mother. Um, I think his mama took issue with that. She said a few things. And Blueface responded. And when he responded, I'm not going to quote everything he said because we know we're on the time limit, but I can say short for people to understand. It was a lot of things I don't think this person should say to his mom. I can understand being angry with my mom, but to talk about how many men you was with, how many men you married, tell them your baby daddy or baby father, all y'all got different daddies. Like some, some of that just come off way too disrespectful. Talking about your new husband, a buster. Like, Yo, fellas, is that's what we, so, is, is, is how we giving it up to our moms, man? Is, is, is this what's going on in these streets, man? What's what's going on, man? Y'all need so, to talk to me because I'm kind of confused. I just don't see that being a thing today where we talking to our mother or our father. Like so, you know, let's get up the fact. Yes, he's a public figure, blase, blase, blase. But let's look at the, the man. You know, um, I I do not know his upbringing. I don't know how he was raised. I don't know even if he had. Uh, uh, a good relationship growing up with his with his mother or his parents on the whole. You know what I mean? I do not know, so I can't speak on that. But but what I can say is the majority of time, if it is that us as men, once we have uh, some kind of respect for our mothers, there's certain things that we just don't do, no matter how upset we are, because we have that much uh, grace. We're giving them grace. Yes, you weren't there for me. Yes, you're not. You didn't do X, Y, Z, but I'm going to give you grace because you could have te- you could have took the next option and said, you know what? Plan B or abort. And I would not be here living this beautiful life, you know? So with us men, I just I just believe that if 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 we have some kind of respect for our mothers, we we just don't do certain things. We just don't even speak certain things in the public eye. One-on-one is a different because that's one-on-one. But in the public eye, where everyone now can be against this individual and bashing this individual because simply because you are, you know, an influencer or what the case might be. To me, it's, it's I can't say it's not right because if he feels it's right, I, there's a book called As a Man Think It by James Allen. If whatever you think, you're right, basically. If you don't think it, you're right. If you think it, you're right. So if he thinks he's right, guess what? He's right. But social views, 
certain things, you know, socially you can't really do or you shouldn't do. Sorry, not you can't, but you should not do because it, that brings more trauma to other stuff around you. Quick interjection, Paul, but I want Brother Mark on touch on this. Do you know what year that book was written? What year? Yeah. Um, no, I can look it up. What, what year the book was written? No, I'm asking because it really is it's more about a mindset to me because just just real quick, when when we grew up, and I'm an 80s baby, but I even look at where my parents grew up. Right. I don't know no part of black history where this is acceptable no matter how worse you think it to say talk to your mom. You know what I'm saying? I don't just see that when you have morals or respect. Yeah, right. I don't I don't know his relationship with his mom. I, I personally don't. I wasn't there. And I understand people got limits. But my question, that's why I ask you guys is this ain't just even him. It just bit it just crazy because he's a big, he's a big figure. But what I'm getting at is this is more like a normal. Like I did also see another other day where I, you know we talk about that in a future time where I seen a, a a niece beat up her grandmother. Like physically she beat up her grandma. And this brings more awareness to like to me where I, you brought a bit respect. I think this all is disrespect. So, Brother Marco, as far as what you hear, like, what's, what's, what's going on in the brain of the, of the doc over there, Dr. Harrington? It's so, confusing so, over so, here, man. So, Jonathan Porter. <laughs> Blue face. So, I think it's very disrespectful, but I'm going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm also an 80s baby, but I think it's very disrespectful. And I'm, I can't agree with you, Kathy. I can't, I can't agree with you, man. You can't just do that. Regardless of whether it's public place or whether you have disagreement with your, your mother, if if y'all had, if y'all wait, wait, had pause, pause, up, pause. I'm sorry, pause. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm saying that he's right. I'm saying if he believe he is right, that's yeah. on him. Right, 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 right. Right, right. I'm right, not saying. Right. right, okay, cool, cool. Right, I got you. I got you. Yeah, All right, cool. I, I can't, I can't agree with that. Like, if, if, even if he feels like he's right to disagree with his mother, even in the public eye. Whether she's disrespectful or they had bad blood when they was growing up, she didn't have them or whatever, whatever the case may be. In the public eye, don't do it in front of the public eye. If y'all had a disagreement at Thanksgiving, that shit stays at home. Like you, you keep it at home, right? And and I think this is where we get that with the whole social media and everybody's on camera and you want to do it for the cloud, you want to do it for likes, and you want to do it for whatever the case may be and get money. We are going down a rabbit hole as black people because this is what everybody sees now. Like you said, the the niece or grand, granddaughter beating up the grand, grandmother. We didn't do that when we was little. You no, know, sir. That, that, shit, that shit didn't happen, man. We got our ass beat by the neighbors, the, the uncle, the, 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 aunt, the auntie, the sister. We done got beat up. That wouldn't have happened, man. And we need to get back to that. Like, we can't be disrespectful to the other members of our family like that. If we had a disagreement, we we keep it in the household. We, you know, we say, "Hey, I'm I'm sorry." And I learned that in yoga yesterday. We have to get back to the fact of saying, "I'm sorry, forgive me, I love you." Let's move on. You know, whatever the case may be, and get back to that as a whole. And that don't even go on to like. African American <clears throat> culture, but you know, Native American, Caucasian, American, you know, Indian, Muslim, whatever the case may be, us as a whole. But I think that's very disrespectful for the both of them. I think that entire family needs counseling because they, <laughs> they, they all do it. They all do it, bro. Oh, they sorry. going back and forth for for years. It's not just you know, a week ago, two days ago, three days ago, this has been going on for years, bro. And I think it's very disrespectful. And that's just my that's just my short take on it. So I brought this up for you guys, uh not just really to pick on Blueface or nothing like that. The the bigger meaning is he's a celebrity, right? And we know celebrities have the most eyes on them. Exactly. And I, I think it's getting crazy to tell we're at a point today. Where you see, and I'm not, I'm not, not now listen, I have a scour on the internet because I know people who love it, like going to comments and say, oh, white people do this, Mexican do this. <clears throat> but so we're talking about us in this man. And maybe it's the news that they put around us or whatever the case may be. But 
when I see our people the most in these times, man, I see the most disrespect that I don't even understand. Because I could not imagine, like, like, like for instance, we growing up, you were growing up, your mom might have pissed you off. And you know, and there's some kids who did it too. You, you remember, like, you might say something about your mom that was disrespectful, but you had to look around like 30 times. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Fucking hurts. Yeah. No, you you be mad tripping like man. Right, right, right. Hey, what the, who the fuck out the house? You looking around like thirty because you know she heard you say anything about you doing what? You doing what? You get slapped up from here to goddamn point Z there, and then your daddy he around he whooped your ass. Anybody who catch you just being disrespectful, it was more right. of a punishment. And right. today, <clears throat> well, I'm trying to make it too jokey, like, but today it seems like. The people that's in the forefront, uh, whether the celebrities, ball players, NFL, you name it. I'm not just highlighting all these guys, but what I'm saying is when you notice the light is on us now, I see the representation doing like the most craziest things. And I think like, man, this is something that it should be brought and bring awareness to because man, even seeing that her that niece beating up her grandma, like and for her to do that, I don't even know what could go through your mind so I can beat my grandma. Like, I, I don't, I, I can't think of nothing in my brain to where I would think, rest her soul, where I would have swung on my grandma. And mm-hmm. I think that's a dangerous part to live in to where our society is that numb, that cold to where this is cool. Because now if celebrities doing it and they're putting their business on, on business to tell how their mom operated and she was this and that and don't have no regards. What's going to happen in 2030? What's going to happen in 2040? So that's why, so that's can, why I had to bring to their brother's attention. I'm sorry, it, but even the, teacher, even the teachers, man, when they beating up the teachers, man, that, even yeah. that. Yo, I'm so not can, we, can we agree then that um, based off what we spoke about earlier, we're not doing this for us. Literally, we're doing it for the next generation because you just said a niece beat up her grandmother. All this talk that we're having now, and I'm, I am so happy that you interjected and you disagreed with me. Um, Brother Marco, why? Because in watching this network, it doesn't make any sense. We're like, yeah, I agree. I agree. People don't want that. They want to see the disagree. Why? Because they want to know why do you disagree? Because someone could be thinking just how you think and someone think how I'm thinking. But we need to get everyone on the same basis to understand, yo, it is okay to disagree, but disagree respectfully, but have your facts. Don't have an opinion or this is what I think, but as you just said, back in the day, this stuff would never be happening because there's a certain amount of respect that we're having for not only our elders, but community on a whole, because we don't want to be looked upon in a, in a disappointment in the community, you know? So I am happy for that. And I thank you for disagreeing because, yeah. Right, and to continue with that, I mean, it's just like, it's just like um like the other day, and I mean I'm gonna use this for an example for myself. Like the other day, I was at the store. Some kid was running was running out the store, and I reached and grabbed the child. I mean she, she had to be like maybe two, just and I grabbed I grabbed the child. Like, what? Who kid like who kid is this? You know what I'm saying? And some lady running out. She was like, "Hey, you see my baby? I'm like, yeah, this your child?" And she was like, "Yeah, thank you." You know, I mean, I understand you laughing, but it's like, hey, as a whole, like mm-hmm. somebody else could have been like, this this child could have ran out, been ran over by by a car or whatever like that. That's a grieving mother now, you right. know. And as a whole, and as a community, that's what we did growing up back in those days. That's what I saw, like my parents and other people's kids do. Like, I, we didn't hear about a lot of kidnappings and stuff like that back in our days because somebody else is parents or kids or uncles or whatever like that looked out for other people. We don't do that nowadays because if Sally Mae next door or whatever like that or down the street was cussing or fighting or whatever the case may be, you police them kids. So nowadays it's the it's the point of like, they be like, oh, don't touch my kids. Don't fucking do that shit right. to my kids. You wanna, and, you want, and you want right. to wanna fight, but that ain't how it's supposed to be. You, right. supposed, you, you should be happy that Somebody else's parent or somebody else to police your kid up so that you know nine one one ain't picking your child up off the street because Correct. they just got shot because somebody don't want to 
get them hands and paws put on them or whatever like that. And they want to pull a gun because they can't defend themselves. Or five-year-old Johnny to walk down the street and drown because he don't know how to swim down at the pond and he don't know where the fuck his house is. You know, some shit like that. Right, right, right. No, no, man. Hey, look, we we definitely got some things we need to touch on next week because we definitely, we hit the buzzer beater a few minutes ago. But um, <laughs> definitely, this these are some good topics I think we need to follow back on. Actually, it's still a few things we ain't touch on. Then, of course, you know, every week in America or in the world, is always something crazy going on. So, you know, I, I, I love talking with my brothers, but these are some very busy, busy men. You know what I'm saying? Brother Comar got like 30 kids down there. He taking them to hear the bull. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I don't want to go. Yeah, you ain't, you, you ain't lying, man. I got football. I got basketball. I got everything going on right now. So, And I, see, that's a doctor. A busy doctor. See, that's what I'm saying, man. We we don't want to hold these busy men time too much. And of course, I, I do love dialogue with these brothers. And again, we are at episode two. You know what I'm saying? We got so much things to unpack. We got so much content for you guys. And the world do too. We just going to help you all deliver it. So in closing, you brothers got anything you want to say before I start giving the shout outs? Yes. Nah, um, this is the anti-network. And just remember, it is okay to disagree, but disagree respectfully. All right, my brother Marco ain't say he got nothing, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Brother Marco, you showed it about 20 minutes ago. Can you put down oh, the camera? Oh, oh, Can you put that? Yeah, look, yeah, hey, yeah. I told you, bro. I'm already on it. So, guys, <laughs> man, my go, brother, go that, you know what I'm saying? Doctor Harrington, you know what I'm saying? For the book purpose, Marco Harrington, man, y'all make sure y'all check it out on Amazon. Y'all get y'all a soft copy, a hard copy, a Kindle version. You know what I'm saying? Mine on the way. So, you know, I, mean, I couldn't get it. Mexico went a lot. It was tripping. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you see my brother over there, Brother Kasi got on that bright red. You know what I'm saying? And we already know that's Bonus Shake and Bonus Shakes and Serve. Man, check out BonusShake.com for the dope merch. You see the black, you know what I'm saying? Ace of Spade hat on, but no, no, no links to Jay Z, man. You know what I'm saying? But it's no nope, different. Nope. But all that's the Bonus Shake time, man. Links will be in the bio, man. Make sure you check my brothers out, man. They're doing their thing. Again, this is the anti network. And, and just to end it on a note, I ain't a doctor by, by trade. Everybody just call me doctor just to be calling me doctor. So don't be coming out here trying to. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fraud or anything. Like that. It's, just, it's, just a, it's just a nickname. Don't be out here trying to. Trying yeah. To like- Fraud. Hey, disclaimer. disclaimer. I, I'm mad I didn't stop the court because I was gonna leave it at that spot. Like, he's a fraud. <laughs> yeah, bad. <laughs> yes, hey, yes, man. yes, man. Episode two, the Anti Network. Oh my God, man. Always a pleasure. Uh, and I'm trying to get out the damn streams. I gotta do some editing on my side, but hey, we out. Yes, All sir. Right. And cut when I can cut this goddamn screen. So give me a second. <laughs> 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 Did we cut or not yet? No, nah, not nah. yet.